So today we are dealing with section 4.1, and before we begin, say good morning to Ava. Say hi, Ava. Hi. And say hi, Murphy. Hi. All right. So the first thing that we're going to deal with <clears throat> is how to tell if a function is linear. So some examples of linear functions are y is equal to 1 4th x plus 6, y is equal to 3x plus 5. These are in slope y-intercept form, and this is in standard form or general form, and it's x plus y equals 22. The key to it is that all the variables have degree or power of 1. Okay, The degree, uh, if you have a degree of 2 or a degree of 3, the degree of 2 you can have up to two roots. So you, you can have one bend in there. There's always the number of, the number that is the degree and you knock it down by one and that's how many turns you can have in your function. Um, now, examples of uh, things that are not uh, linear. So we'd have negative two x squared plus three x cubed equals six. Three x plus five y squared equals 16. And this one I want to solve for y, just to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to subtract 3x, and I'm going to subtract 3x. And over here I'm going to have 5y squared is equal to a negative 3x plus 16. I'm going to divide through by 5, and so each of the terms gets a 5. sixteen-fifths. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to impose a square root. And the moment that I impose a square root in there, I get this plus or minus. Well, there's your indication uh, that when it's a squared y, that's a square root over something that has the x on it. So, it's not linear. Um, a fractional exponent is going to get you something that's not linear as well. Alright, so they ask you to determine if something a function is increasing or decreasing. And coming into that would be something like zero slope as well, so I added that in. So zero slope is when the line is flat. It's perfectly horizontal. It's not increasing, it's not decreasing. The way you tell if something is increasing is if the slope is positive. The way you tell if something is decreasing, the slope is negative. So if we had two points, 1, 5, and 4, 11, and we want y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, we get 6 over 3, which is 2. Well, that's a positive slope, so the, the, the function is increasing. So I just wanted to make a quick note. You have two goofball things. You have this undefined slope and you have this zero slope. Undefined slope occurs when your x values match. And just to show you, so it goes 3 minus 2 over 4 minus 4, which is 1 over 0. Well, we don't know how to divide by 0, so we call it undefined. Uh, zero slope occurs when the y values match. So you have 4 minus 4 over 3 minus 2, which is equal to 0 over 1, which we can divide by 1, and we end up with 0. So it's a zero slope. It's not increasing or decreasing. All right. Parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular lines, and this symbol is the symbol for perpendicular, have slopes that are negative reciprocals. And if you multiply them together, if you multiply the two slopes together, they should multiply to negative 1. So real quick here, they multiply to negative 1. Keep that in mind. All right. So determine uh, if two lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. It's one of the types of problems that are in the, in the book. So they give us two equations. We have 4x minus 7y equals 10 and 7x plus 4y equals 1. And the trick is, solve them both for y. So I minus 4x minus 4x divide by negative 7, and I get 4 over 7 is the slope here. Here I'm going to subtract uh, 7x on both sides, divide by 4. Um, I did, because I wasn't even focused on the y-intercept, everything gets divided by 4, though. And then uh, we see the slope here is negative 7 over 4, and the slope here is 4 over 7. So if I multiply them, I get negative 1. So these two lines are perpendicular. Okay. All right. Your book likes to give you uh, pictures, and they say, okay, uh, see if you can get the equation of this line. Well, you need two things. You need a slope, and you need a point. Well, we already have points. We have two points on there. So 0, 2, and 4, 1. Um, so first I get the slope. 
1 minus 2 over 4 minus 0, so I end up with a negative 1 fourth. So I'm going to have a negative there, and I'm going to have a negative there, and I'm going to have a negative there. Negative 1 fourth x. I have y minus 2 is equal to negative 1 fourth x. I add 2, and I have y is equal to negative 1 fourth x plus 2. Okay. Now, your book also likes to give these flat lines, and I want to show you how to deal with these if you're looking at them visually. So you're going to select a bunch of points off the graph, and this works as well if you do a vertical line. But you'll notice the ordered pairs are 1, negative 1, 2, negative 1, 3, negative 1, 4, negative 1. Well, it's always the case that the y equals negative 1, and that's how we describe that line. And if we had a vertical case, so here's our x-axis, here's our y-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4. And here's our line. We make our little t-chart. Well, the ordered pair here is 2, 1, then 2, 2, then 2, 3, then 2, 4. And you'll notice that x is always equal to 2. Okay? Now, this is an example of undefined, undefined slope, and this is an example of zero slope. So if you wrote it out, you'd have 0x plus a negative 1. Here we don't have a y value, so we can't actually even discuss about our, our, our y part of our equation, so we can't really talk about slope in there. That's why it's undefined. All right. Now, another problem, uh, number 72 from the, from the book. They give you the y-intercept is 0, 2, and they tell you the slope is negative 3 over 2, and then find the equation of the line. Well... We have a point, we have a slope. Let's use the point-slope form of a line. That goes y minus y1, there's our y1, is equal to our slope, there's our slope, times x minus x1, there's our point. Uh, negative 3 over 2 times x is right there, the 0 it falls off. Uh, we're going to add 2 on both sides, so we end up with y is equal to negative 3 over 2x plus 2. Okay, hopefully that helps.